to episode 72 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. It's a special edition tonight because I have a live, two live studio guests. I have my wife, uh, Monica. Say hello, Monica. Hi, everybody. Hi, and Stella Mays here. We don't have a Stella she's cam. Over there on she's board. over on the couch. We could have had that camera hooked up, uh, but she's. That's okay. She's so, not cooperating. She's not today. cooperating. She won't stay in Monica's arms. So if you hear us yell Stella, that we're just yelling at little Stella that we bought from uh, a POA person, Tina up Tina in Wisconsin, Maylock. Maylock. Yep. And then uh, we're gonna have a special call-in guest probably in 20 minutes or a half an hour. Or so I'm gonna be contacting uh, Anton Van Eyck from Florida and uh, about. The Wooden Shoe Ranch. He grew up uh, raising POAs with his family. Kitty Van Eyck is a legendary uh, POA promoter and breeder uh, from Florida, and that's uh, his mother. So we're going to have a great conversation. We do have some pictures. I'll actually show his uh, uh, some of his uh, stuff he sent to me on instant message. I'll have that up and pull some of the pictures. Also, if you want to find out more about Wooden Shoe Ranch, the pre- uh, show before this show before Black Hand and Beyond. I did a POA History Live it was called. It was on YouTube and the third video on there if you go on the POA History page on YouTube uh, you'll see was Wooden Shoe Ranch. It's about 15 minutes back then. I was having a lot of technical difficulties and uh, so we, I had to film it like three or four times. That's why I decided to go live because it was taking so much time to do it. And I apologize to him for that, but I still t think it turned out all right. I think these shows are a lot better. That's why I wanted to have him on tonight and just have a discussion about some of the wooden chew uh, ponies and the other POAs that they raised. I know they were associated with a whole bunch of Supreme Champions, either ones the kids made or uh, wooden chew ponies they bred that became uh, supreme champions but first tonight the first topic hello honey Hi. monica uh, okay so the first topic tonight is uh the supreme or uh, the sponsorships i mean at the poac national congress so we're gonna go over here and click on this and then let's go to screen and we'll go screen and monica there you go you're down on the bottom let's click this up so there we go and uh, it's over a little bit, but people should be seeing this on uh, Facebook now. We're starting to really promote for sponsorships, and uh, there's also a form. You've seen the form over there. Let's see. Most everybody should have there started it is. Most everybody has emails. Right, to and them. now kind of tell people here. I'm going to put your you on the large screen. Tell people what you've been doing the last couple days for POAC. I have been going through um, the membership list and um, emailing everybody with a copy of the sponsorship levels along with a sponsorship form for Congress this year Okay. Um, to um, help hopefully uh, get those that um, have in the past um, participated in sponsoring classes at Congress, but maybe some that have never done that before and uh, reaching out to people um, that uh, have not um, received that opportunity before. Right, because that's a good point because we need some new sponsors sometimes too because we have some people that sponsored for like 30, 40 years, but then we have some people that drop out sometimes for various reasons. Some people move on if their kids graduated or whatever, and they, they may still sponsor. Some people right. sponsor for years after they're even involved. But, you know, for various reasons, we may lose some sponsors. And plus, we've added some classes this year. Uh, the schedule just got finalized. Uh, by the board. I know some years it doesn't even get finalized, I don't believe. So this year it did, uh, got approved. We tried to listen to a lot of suggestions. Some of the board members were very heavily involved. I wasn't as vocal as some because I don't have any ponies going or kids showing. So I let some of the other people but uh, uh, do a lot of the heavy lifting there because I didn't want to uh, try to pick where the classes are and stuff when uh, but some of my constituents did tell me what they wanted, and it's going to be in there. Some mm -hmm. of like ranch classes. There's going to be ranch classes. There's going to be ranch classes. So there's going to be 200 and some classes. I think it's 222. Something I like say. that. 200 and some. Uh, meantime, honey, we got people watching. Jan is watching. Jan Rogers. Hi, Jan. You know Jan. Let's my screen. I know Tracy. Tracy. Oh, you can. Can you I, read I it can, over there? Yeah, I can oh, see that's everything. good. <laughs> that's good. So. Hi guys. What we're doing tonight, uh, and then Gay, I think it's her birthday today or yesterday. Ooh, she's happy she's in Australia, so but I, I wished her happy birthday today. So happy birthday! Uh, 
It's very important about these uh, sponsorships because this show has been going since 1959. Right. And like you wrote in your email to everybody, without the sponsorships, it's hard to have the show. Right. You know, and right. we have a great sponsor that sponsors the Jumbotron, uh, Paycom uh, sponsors that and because uh, they have some involvement in POA. And it, that looks really cool when you go in there. Now, we've brought people from outside of POA to that facility and they were impressed by, mm -hmm. you know, that. And they said, oh, we didn't know you guys had stuff like that going on here. Right. You know, when you say, well, we're going to the pony show, you know, so it just looks very impressive to people. And uh, so... All right, so our uh, the platinum sponsorship is the two thousand dollar sponsorship. That's the big one. But then we also have just the regular class sponsorship, one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. If you just want to help out, want to sponsor just one single class, and um, there are plenty that do that. Um, and uh, like I said, um, hopefully somebody who hadn't um, sponsored in the past and was was just on the fence about it, um, maybe um, this will be your year. So. That's right. And, you know, I'm reaching out to some of the alumni and stuff, too. If you haven't sponsored in a long time and maybe your grandparents did or your family, if you want to sponsor a class in the memory of some horse right. you rode or your grandpa stood a stallion or whatever, uh, or you had, you know, that one special pony that you rode and made a supreme champion, or even if you never even showed it to Congress, if it was just, you know, a horse you really liked, we can put it in that horse's name, too. Or if you married in. Or if you married in. You didn't grow up in PLA as well. I did you? not. You didn't grow up, in, but you knew about horses a little bit. A little but, bit. But, but now you have a dog named Stella May. She, Thanks to Janelle Burton. She named it. Yeah, she named it Stella. She, yeah. Her, not it, her. It? She named her. Oh, her. Batgirl. I got in trouble when I said, I'm Batman, because she had her costume on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I have a picture of that here, too. And since we don't see her live, she's in the studio, everybody. She is we here. Had, there she is at Halloween. She, she was very little then. She was very little then. How old is she now? Like six months? She's six and a half months. Yeah. If you guys remember right, we got her at the Futurity. So yes. It was a conspiracy at the Futurity, is what I say. So I think we just got another message from Antone is what that was. So. Okay. So there's our forum there. I'm showing. Let's see. Let me see. Oh, people didn't see that picture because I didn't have the screen up. So let's go back to Stella. <laughs> <laughs> they seen our face. That there was, she is. There she is. That was her for everybody Halloween watching costume. at home. There, yeah. And I put on Batman, and Jackie Guthrie said Batgirl. So yeah, Batgirl. <laughs> so and that blue eye. I play the soprano song, don't I, to her sometimes yeah. with the blue moon in her eye. He and, sings uh, it to I her. I sing more it often. to her. Yeah, and then she runs out of the room screaming like most people do. <laughs> but okay, let's put this back on. So. Yep, so there's the form there, and it's really simple. You also have class preferences, so if you want a certain class, like let's say a halter class or showmanship or whatever, and you're not familiar that maybe somebody does that every year. I suggest that you give us as many options as you can. So if somebody else um, pay their fee before you did and they had chosen your number one, that there's a number two that you would be happy to sponsor as right. well. Um, so if you can fill out all six spots, that just gives you more opportunity to um, get in the space that you're right. more interested in. It doesn't in. mean you're sponsoring six classes. No. Uh -uh. It just means, but if you want to sponsor two, you still can put down several. Right. You know, yeah, because right. some people do want certain classes that they want to sponsor. That's right. Yeah, yeah. they've sponsored the same class for years, and so that's right. where they want to be, or they have... Um, some invested interest in a particular class for some reason and maybe you um, participated when you were younger and you won this particular right. class and so you want to um, honor that by um, sponsoring the class that's so that right. would be um, amazing that would be and we want to thank everybody that's already getting in their sponsorships so yes we've been getting in some small sponsorships and some big ones we've received some diamonds and and golds, right? We've got or, several platinum sponsors, we, oh, too. Oh, we did? Okay, mm -hmm. good. And so. I met, uh, Joy told me today that the fees are starting to roll into the office, okay, too. Okay, Joy so. from the mm -hmm. office. And now that's very important, guys, because uh, I know in the past, and this is a big thing with the end caps and stuff, and it's just a, a big job for everybody involved with the stall coordinator and the sponsorship coordinator. So if there's been hiccups before, we're going to try to eliminate that. Things happen. But this year we put in for sure in motion that uh, first come, first serve as far as payment. So make sure I'm saying this right. 
right, Mahindra? Right. Um, so the way that we're going to um, have the uh, star, or the end caps chosen for where you want your um, end cap to be is when your payment's received in the office, you get put on the list for that pers- for that spot. So if there's two people ahead of you that sent in your their payments before you, those two people would choose their spots first, and then you get that chance to choose your spot. Right. Um, so it does um, benefit you to go ahead and get those payments in as soon as possible. Right. So verbally committing, you can verbally commit right mm-hmm. now, but if you're wanting an end cap, I would go ahead and pay it if you can. But like a class or whatever, you know, you have May 20th to get it you paid You have until May 20th to yeah. get all of your fees so, in. So if you want to sponsor a couple classes and, you know, you just, it's just quite, not quite in the budget now, go ahead and, uh, you know, commit to it, and then you have till May 20th. Right. But like I say, the bigger sponsorships, you might as well send that in because I know people already are. And then that just secures your place uh, in order. So That's right. And I hope we have a lot of end caps this year. So I hope it's a big show. It is in Tulsa again this year. And uh, like I say, we do have Paycom on board again. So, And we have a different whole different group of people running the show. We have an executive director in yes. place. And Bill's uh, been... Um, invested in the entire process. Yeah. He's been in contact with me several times. Bill called me, I believe, yesterday morning. I was in uh, the other office over here doing something, and he said, uh, is Monica around? And I'm like, well, Bill, I'm at work, but I said I can get her a number for you. And he's like, yeah, that would be great, because it was all about the sponsorship. Right, so right. You're in contact with the office more than I am now. Probably. We, uh, we've learned how to email people. Lindsay, bless her heart. I have so many questions for her on a regular basis. Right. And, um, she's probably getting tired of me by now. Oh, well, at the convention, we might be sitting by ourselves because people don't <laughs> like the, the sponsorship people sometimes because we're the ones begging for money. That's and, okay. That's why I have Stella. She's my POA right. emotional support dog. Right. That's why we have Stella. So she's over there <laughs> laying on the couch. Hey, Stella. Hi. Oh, I shocked you. Anyway, uh, so... I don't want to call people, cold call people, but I will. Monica's already sending the emails out. But if we get down to May and there's still a group of classes, you know, I'm just going to start uh, really bombarding Facebook and just try to get those classes sponsored, you know, the best we can. And uh, like the, where we're sitting right here, Jackson's, let's do this. Come join, Come the, join family. the family. They sponsored last year. And uh, I'm hoping they'll do it again this year. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's a downturn in the industry right now. Everybody knows that the car, car and housing market both is uh, suffering right now. So and today we had several people, a a little girl came in today with her mom and they asked to see Tyron because he'd bought a bunch of candy bars from her. But this time I could tell she had a packet and she needed a dance sponsorship mm-hmm. or something yeah and he said well i'm shane jackson i can help you out and she did such a good speech to him you know probably six years old that you know he he donated money to her hundred dollars right. and uh, you know we we have football teams and people coming in all the time so that they can donate even five hundred dollars to a poa organization that they have nothing to do with except for me working here mm-hmm. you know that's pretty cool they don't have any kids that show in it or anything so uh, i wish we could do more but they do provide the studio too so yes. and, and gives us the chance to talk about the congress again i think it's going to be a good congress people are are ready for a really good show and it is going to be in Tulsa again we can't uh, we can't control the heat you're looking for crickets what are you looking for I have no huh? idea oh she found she a moth she oh. found an old, an old Yay. moth yeah so. she's the bug finder yep so Tracy yep she's always thanks Jackson's and I know a lot of people thank Jackson's Pat Burton actually bought a truck here I've sold a few vehicles to POA people mm-hmm. uh, you know of course uh Aaron Metcalf and her husband, uh, Neil Metcalf, they bought a vehicle here years ago. I sold a a, few cakes to POA people over the years, Yeah, you did. That one time we were going to Stillwater for for that one cake for a graduation, I believe. Uh And and I didn't even know it was POA at first, and then you told me. There were some people in Guthrie and some in Cherokee. And, of course, I hauled all those treats that one year over to Congress. So. Didn't she make some stuff for Edmund too? Edmund's the big P. Edmund, town. yeah. yeah. Think, Didn't she make a tree? You made a oh, no, Christmas tree. Oh no, that was Guthrie. Tree? That was Guthrie, but it was. It wasn't Christmas. It was strawberry. It was a strawberry, a strawberry tree. tree. Okay, well, it looked like a Christmas tree, but it's strawberry. What do I know? So, <laughs> so okay. So these classes are pretty much. Let's put the screen back on here. With uh, there we go. So 
Here, let's put you on there. Oh, you don't need to put me on there. That's fine. Okay, I'll put me on there. Okay. All You're right. more handsome. You're the co-host tonight, though. You're our special guest. First special guest, Harley, or Stella's the second special guest. And then, sorry, Anton, you're the third guest, but that's all right. That's just because you're calling. So, uh, again, if anybody ever wants to be a guest, it's really easy. You don't need video or anything. It's just a phone call. I call you on the cell phone. and uh, Or if you're in the neighborhood close, you can always come live and sit in here. So people from Edmond and Guthrie, if you want to come in, you can sit right where Monica is. It looks just like that. Cherokee, yeah, Jet, all over the place. So uh, over by Tulsa, it's not that far away. So we did have the Jones uh, came in here. Uh, well, Nolan's, remember? Mm-hmm. Jan and her husband, Brian. Jan Jones, Nolan, and Brian. Ashley's Bacon. been here a Ashley's times. been here several times. She was on our very first episode. Yep. Ashley was, yeah. So, okay, so let's go back to this level again. So, again, if we could get... Quite a few platinum sponsorships, that would be cool because that takes care of six class sponsorships uh, at each each time we sell us platinum. So that's good. But like I say, if you can only do a double or if you can do a single, there's also some other special things that we may be talking about later, right? Different mm-hmm. things. But some of those are already sponsored, like the oldest pony and the boot scramble and stuff. And some of those exist because they're a sponsor. Right. You know? There are the specialty classes too. That or specialty things. So if you got any questions about those, you can contact Monica or the office and ask them about that. So, uh, And the only level that I don't have any sponsors for yet and I believe last year there were only two is the gold level sponsorship the gold level sponsorship Mm -hmm. okay the thousand dollar one yes okay all right I believe if I remember my paperwork correctly last year there were only two sponsors in that class in that level okay only two last year? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, see, like Jackson's, the bronze fits them because they don't need an end cap. I mean, they they could. And have, Jackson's was the only bronze. They were the only, I remember that. They were the only $500 one because a lot of people want something. They want an end cap and a stall. Yeah. And, I mean, we could set up an end cap for Jackson's and put the podcast or something in there. But I guess I could come up with some kind of um But we incentive. don't need a stall, uh, you know, and then, then the stall would be by itself. A so. dozen free cookies or, something. <laughs> or brown. Yeah, I don't something. know. I don't know. You, you're getting yourself in trouble. <laughs> I, there, know. So. I know. So maybe I know. I might bake. I might bake this year for Congress. We'll see. Okay, we'll see. So you're baking strawberries, or you don't bake strawberries, but you're dipping strawberries now for Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. right before we go to the convention. So, mm-hmm. are you excited to go to the, your very first convention, Monica? Yeah. You've yeah. never been to. No. So you've been to. You were actually you weren't ever at a sale. You were at an event where the sale was, but we left before the sales. That's correct. That was Jenny, my yeah, my youngest niece on my side. Right, Kirk, Kirk's youngest daughter yeah, got she was married, getting married, and I couldn't September. believe she got married on a Friday. And I'm like, the futurity's on a Thursday. So remember, we came right. up there Wednesday night, and uh, I took you to the big steer. Mm-hmm. Remember, because I in Altoona or whatever, and I said you had to do that because I'd done that for years. And then we went and watched Wednesday. We visited some people. Then we watched about half the futurity or till two or so, and then made the drive up Des Moines to to uh, where I grew up. Doesn't seem like yeah, nothing it now. wasn't. It was what when five hours. Yeah, five hours or so. Mm-hmm. So and then so we missed the sale. If I would have known that was the last sale I was ever going to be at, I probably would have planned something different. But I couldn't miss her. Uh, wedding so and then we went to the futurity of course this last year in Gordyville so right. you got to go to that yes. and we were there from the beginning to the and end I, I, yeah we were there for the whole thing and yeah. I heard all the stories about Gordyville on the way there and I heard more stories on the way back because you know Kent he's a storyteller and we got so. a dog from Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> we got a dog she's while a, we were she's in had, I think she's a rat terrier she's supposed to be a cowboy corgi but I call her the little rat. Hey, you want to come here? You want to come here? Come here, Stella. Come here. Oh. oh. Did you get her? I got her. There she is. I could have turned the camera off. Hi, there Stella. she is. Hi, Stella, Stella. May. Say hi. Oh, your heart's going. Get that blue <laughs> eye in there. Stella. Was, hi, sweet girl. This is like a telethon. we got to bring Stella in to sell sponsorships. <laughs> So she's so she cute. is my POA support emotional support dog. Yeah, so. I want to get a little blanket made, a little thing for her that says <laughs> P- POA emotional support dog, because that's what she is for Monica. So, hi Stella, there's your mom. There's Monica. Hi, hi. sweet girl. You want to say hi to all the POA people? There you go. Here. Get that blue eye. That's your camera right there. You're in camera A. See? She's like 
what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? You looking for crickets and moths and things? Yeah. She's a worm. She likes to try oh to get worms Oh, my gosh. When We've it had rains. so much rain lately, and she just um, digs up the worms and brings them into the house to me. Right. It's not fun. So, Stella, tell people, get your sponsorships, and you're worth a $150 sponsorship, ain't you? Can you get a couple class sponsorships for us? Huh? I don't know if you if you can get a platinum or not. Maybe. People are either going to do that or not. But you might talk somebody into a class sponsorship. Huh? She's like four times bigger than most of you have seen her. Yeah, she and she, well, uh, my coworkers and some of them have seen her at our house because uh -huh. when Monica's gone, I have card games sometimes, but they couldn't believe because she was here. Monica went on a trip not long after we got her, and I had to have her here for almost a week, and she was so tiny. She was mm -hmm. eight, eight, nine weeks old, and we had that little kennel. People were saying, that's a tiny kennel. I'm like, it's a tiny, tiny puppy. Dog. Yeah, she don't fit in there now, but she no. she's getting long. I don't know if you she's can see really how long, long she yeah. is, but she and she ain't very uh, old yet, so she's not even a year, like six months. So sweet girl, she's a sweetie though. She's a lover. Yeah, somebody just said, "When is the show?" Well, we're having the show right now. We're just having the uh, the part about the Congress sponsorships, and then the wooden shoe part will be on here uh, closer to. 7 o'clock Central Time. So, all right, Stella. You I want, think they might be asking when Congress Oh, is. when the Congress show is? I thought they meant when the show now. Well, Congress is in July, July 5th through, what is it, the 12th? I believe so. It's usually like seven days. So Yes, 5 to yeah. 12. So, now I remember, you know, I shouldn't maybe even bring this up, but I remember years ago it was 4th of July weekend. It used to be. Oh, wow. A lot of times. And when they moved it off of 4th of July weekend, uh... They said some people couldn't go because now they lost their 4th of July, you know, day off and stuff, and they just couldn't go. Well, now I've heard some people can't go because it is too close to the 4th of July. Right. So it's funny how things come around, you know, you hear both both things. But, of course, well, the show. Well, the, the work, er, um, work right. er, uh, atmosphere is different now for right. people. After COVID and everything, I think um, some people just, it's still hard to have enough coverage and stuff. Right. And like here, I don't have to work the day before and the day after. And a lot of people showing don't have to either. No. You know, I and I don't get Fourth of July is one day we do get off. We don't get Memorial or Labor Day off, but we do get Thanksgiving. And yes, and he gets Fourth to go see the um, fireworks with me. Yeah. Last year I went to where you were somewhere last year, I think, because I went to Oklahoma City on the Fourth of July and watched. Uh, I was probably Pro. with mom. Yeah, I think you were. I watched Halter at the Appaloosa Nationals because mm -hmm. I'd never been to a big Appaloosa show. And then uh, the next day I went to the board meeting to attend the board meeting. So what do you got to do? Get back on the sponsorships? Mm -hmm. You want to read some stuff? That's or what why do you we're here, do? right? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. So um, uh, the uh, different breakdowns are listed here. And Mostly the difference between silver, gold, diamond, and platinum are the number of classes you get sponsorships for. Um, and I know that the end caps are included in those. And um, I know that there were issues last year. Um, believe me, we've all heard about the issues last year. And um, we are going to be um, working diligently. Bill is committed to making sure that 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 goes off without a hitch, and um, I am committed right along there with him um, to make sure that um, everybody gets their end caps um, as best as we can. So um, please be patient with us and know that we are on top of it and we are working on it. And uh, we are hoping to make this the best Congress that um, you guys have had. So <laughs> please just um, bear with us. Um, Bill, uh, wh while he has been around horses and horse shows, he has some idea of how things are supposed to go, but he is new to POA. And I have never done anything like this with POA before. So uh, just <laughs> bear with us, and we will figure it out and get it all set for you. So, But you have been on boards and stuff and served yes, on nonprofit yeah. boards. Yes. So uh, it was a shock when you come up to me and said, guess what, honey? Uh, I'm going to be the sponsorship. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's, it's all right. All right. Hey, Somebody has to do at this. At Futurity, I went and told Diane, I am happy to help. Give me a job. And she gave right. me a job. 
Right. So. Well, because you were trying to help out there, and you were when we were measuring and stuff. You were helping Tracy with packets and different things, mm-hmm. and you jumped into that. And she's seen how much you wanted to jump into help. So she, so she's still doing the Futurity sponsorships, and she's getting a lot of those already because she's a pro at it. She's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. But she wanted to ease the load a little bit, so she handed off the Congress. So uh, we didn't sign a long term term contract to do it. So I don't know how long we'll we'll do it but uh the show is close to us now and since i'm on the board i will help out more with the show and stuff too like we're gonna i think we're gonna be there four or five days out of the week so that's a lot off and on we ain't gonna stay the whole time but uh i gotta come back and work monday and tuesday and then we'll probably come back darn job that darn job they're sitting here that keeps me in my lifestyle right so (laughs) anything else you want to add monica um I would like to say that um, those of you who like to get correspondence via email from the office, from POAC, you may want to take some opportunity to check with the office and see what email they have for you. Because in the process of going through these 722 emails to send um, these forms out to everybody, a lot of them have come bounce back as um, not deliverable. So um, that might be something that um, we need to figure out how to co- you know, collect those again or right. uh, what have you. But um, Lindsay has said that they've had a similar issue um, for the past year or so where a lot of emails are just bouncing back. It could be that um, you had originally given a job email and you're no longer at that job or, you know, you've moved and your email changed with you, um, things like that. So um, I do encourage you to somehow get in touch with the office and uh, make sure that they have your correct email address so that um, uh, they can correspond with you um, and send you um, updates on different um, programs and um uh, different um, uh, sponsorships and things like that that they have going on. So Right. This might be a good time to update that. That's what happens. Sometimes you do one project and another thing can get updated. Right. So look at me, how many emails I have, you know, and it was by accident. When I get a new, one time we got new phones and the guy at AT&T put he in the wrong, he just email. created a new one. <laughs> so I've had Kent Rourke sales forever. Now I use K Rourke sales and sometimes, and the POA club had a couple different old ones. They had one that was like 15 years old, but that's understandable. Right. So, all right. So anything else you want to add, Monica? Just um, I just, uh, please sponsor something. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> We're banking already. Please. It's no, not even made I, I, you just uh, the sh- the Congress, the Futurity, the all of these shows are put on because sponsors financially back those um, classes, and so you know we just need the the help to make sure that this continues, and that's how. We, you can do that is by sponsoring a well, class. Tracy mentioned earlier that sometimes the revenue from, or a lot of times, the revenue from the Congress pretty much runs the office. Right, you know right. I mean? She mentioned yeah. that. I'm scrolling back up here to see where she said it. But anyway, it's it's on there. So, uh, And that is true because it can be a very profitable show. But if we didn't have the sponsorships, then you would have that twenty or thirty or forty thousand dollar gap there. Right. And know. there's lots of things that um that I understand that you guys used to do that did fill that spot that you don't do that anymore. Like um your sale and and things like that that help to bring those profits into well the and just registrations across right. the board and all braids of horses you know not just stock horses definitely not just POAs are way down just like the car industry you that you live with and not trying to sell a house thing and the economy goes like this it ebb and flows right. so a new membership you know um I joined this year so. yeah Monica joined so <laughs> so you know um new members we we can I'm sure we can always use new members Right. And um, I have been, <laughs> I have been um, pleasantly surprised at how interested I have become in POA and the difference in a POA to an Appaloosa and this and that and the other thing. And believe me, Kent over here, he quizzes me every once in a while. And um, but um, well, luckily you didn't have to put up with my dad and I too much. You did a little bit, but if it, my dad would have been younger. 
you know, we used to rap for hours. When we first met, we still yes. were in, yeah. four, in uh, 12, but, you know, and then we got married in 14, but uh, we would talk for hours. But back when we were raising POAs, we might talk two hours in a day about future uh, generations that right. we were gonna we're gonna breed this one to this one and then if it's a filly take it and breed it to this one right <laughs> yeah see um tracy did say without yeah. the sale that without the financial the responsibility falls, falls on the congress, congress. So, so if you have sponsors. a hiccup you know if for some reason people you know the fair's booked during or a champ show or something's booked during the same week as right. congress or a bunch of people have family stuff or they're just down for some reason and don't show or you have a hiccup with something you know that kind of like last year we had you know the show we, i mean we're not gonna sweep that under the rug we did right. have some issues with the show management company and different things we're not gonna go into all that but if things like that happen which it can well then we uh Th then we have problems and right. that can cut into you know the the profit so right. that's what i'm trying to say so well, so these sponsorships help pick that up right and another thing that um i understand used to be a big thing was um like a competition between the different state clubs about um sponsorships i wouldn't mind seeing that again uh see every state club do some level of sponsorship even if it's just for a class Right. Um, I think that that would be um, a fun thing to see um, which states would participate that way. Right. So um, right. there's lots of things that um, if I continue to do this that um, I'd like to see build. Because uh, <laughs> I know that there was like a state challenge or something right. like that at one time. Right. And so um, I don't know necessarily that we need to do the dollar amount that it used to be, but um, I'd like to see um, every state club sponsor at least a single class well of course yeah that would be cool and that then you have regional wonderful. clubs and you have stuff like that so yeah yeah um yeah and i know we have done things in the past with youth trying to get lately that hasn't worked out too well you know youth trying to get sponsorships but back 20 years or so ago we told them you know go to your tax stores go to places where your family spends money like if they buy shavings or hay from somewhere you know right. try to get sponsorships just 150 dollars well, if there's if you know? there's somebody who wants to do that um you know i would we would definitely welcome it right. um so you know if you do um uh, purchase um, supplies from a particular vendor and you think that that would be something that they'd be interested in, talk to them about it. And if you need me to contact them or Kent to contact them, we'll be happy to do that. Just right. let us know. Right. All right, honey. Well, it's uh, 8 o'clock in Florida, so it's 7.04 oh. here. So I need to probably get to my other guests. Okay. But we talked about Congress for a half an hour. So that's pretty good. We <laughs> talked about Stella for half that time, I think. Stella, she's down here playing with me. You don't want to say goodbye? That's fine. So. <laughs> All right, Monica. Well, thanks a lot for being on the show tonight. Sure. And thanks for doing. She is doing the main part of it. A lot of people do send stuff to me because they know me. So like at work, right. I'll get a thing I did today. You know, oh, we're sponsoring a diamond sponsorship. Here it is. And then I just pass it he on to you. He just forwards so, it know, on to which me. Is so fine. that's fine. That's you fine. can do but that. Monica's information is going to be out there more and more where you can go straight to her. Or you can just bypass us and go straight to the club. That's yes, fine too. absolutely. Joy and Bill. Joy and Bill and Lindsay are are yeah. all aware and um, right. they are happy to take your sponsorships and your payments and make sure they get applied to the right place. And then so. they just notify us. And you may come on here again closer to May. We might put up a sheet and show, you know, 128 classes or whatever it is. And here's, you know, here's how many blank we have. Because mm -hmm. if we had that tonight, it'd be startling because there's a lot of classes that are not sponsored yet. But they're coming with the Oh, look, especially. Kansas Club will do a sponsorship. We always do. Yay! There you go. They always Thank do. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, who's up next? Yeah. What state? Come on. Uh, the Sooner Club probably. <laughs> I can't talk for the Sooner Club, but uh, they probably... Well, I think they usually do. A lot of clubs do, so that's good. And it can be kind of a competition maybe to see who gets it in first or something. Who knows? 
But the next year, maybe we can work on something different. Are we doing this again next year? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> they may not want us. Bill now is here. He may say, no, he may you guys say that he's going to do yeah, it. Yeah, maybe Bill will do it. I think he's got a lot on his plate he already. Does. He yeah. He's doing a great job already. So I He met jumped in with both feet, and he started running right away. He did. The guy's only been with POAC since December or so. December 1st or 4th right. or whatever day right. he started. So we just had the meeting in September about hiring somebody. So now we're already talking about how good a job he's doing, which he is. But give him a year and it'll be even better. So I know he's got some ideas for Congress, too, and yeah. how to help run the show smoother. So And the board's working, you know, we're, like I say, we all work on that thing and some harder than others, you know, because it was supposed to. They were supposed to, Tracy and Jess, Tracy Phila from Washington did a lot of the heavy lifting on it, and so yeah. did Jess, uh, Drish, uh, Kata from Iowa. So, all right, Monica, i got to move on to my next guest. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank let me, you. Let me put you there. You go. I ahead. look forward to um, re hearing from all of you about your sponsorship opportunities. There you go. All right, Monica, <laughs> thanks. Well, that was my wife, uh, my beautiful wife, Monica Rourke, and Stella May Rourke, our little puppy, so uh, that we got from, of course, a POA person, so... She's the only dog we have that was bred to be a, a certain dog. The other two we just, you know, uh, rescued. rescued. So this one was actually bred. So we have three dogs now. So, all right, I'm going to give uh, Anton a call in Florida. So if you're watching Anton, which I know you are, uh, I'll be calling you here. And let me just put the screen up. And I'm going to do, let's see, I'll put the screen with, yep, that's fine. There's the blank spot. We'll just have that on there. And we'll do this. There we go. There's a wooden chew pony while I'm getting my phone out here. So you guys enjoy that. And Anton is going to tell us all about that one and much more. Mm -hmm. So and we're going to talk about his mom, Kitty Van Eyck, who, if you don't know, is in the Hall of Fame. And I'm going to make sure I've been pronouncing their last name right all these years because that's always when you read it on paper. You never know. But I think I have heard it at the Futurity and stuff. I pronounced it at the sale before. Thanks again, Monica and Stella. Bye. See ya. Okay. All right. Let me make sure I got this in. Here we go. Boom. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Good. You're live on Facebook, so a whole three or four people are watching. No, there's way more than that. So there's uh, people watching you. So I got to ask okay. you a question right away. How how often do you get called? Uh, Antoine instead of Antone. Does that happen in your life? <laughs> My whole life. Your whole life, because I almost yeah. did it. I almost did it, and I know better. I mean, I, you know, when I got into POAs, you were showing, and uh, I think you were still in youth or just barely out of youth, and then I watched you bring your ponies, you know, to the futurity and the sale for years. So, and then the last name is Van Eyck, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I have a saying down here. I'm not a, I'm a con, not a twan. <laughs> You're a con, not a twan. That's a yeah. good one. Well, I knew you'd be a good interview and I've never spoke to you in person. So <laughs> I have, I think in groups, but not on the phone and we didn't prep this or anything. So well, this is just. No, and, and I, that's my fault. I didn't get a chance to get back with you. Oh, that's all right. So I'm uh, in capping season right now with my miniatures okay. down here. Yeah, you have, you guys, uh, you and Kirk have a lot of different animals, don't you, down there? Oh, my gosh. We've got parrots, <laughs> turtles, tortoises, um, miniature, I raise zebu cows. We have miniature donkeys. Uh, I have mule, um, just about everything, pigs, wow. chicken. I was telling one of my coworkers uh, who I was going to interview, and I was telling him, you know, your mom was big into POAs and raised the kids in it. And then I said, now he... Uh, he has a lot of like pets and ex some exotic animals. I said, people just drop off animals at their gate. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, uh, they'll just drop off stuff. <laughs> um, 14 ducks, seven geese, three pigs, two donkeys, and a goat. That sounds like a so Christmas far, song. Well, and I think we've had 14 or 15 cats spayed and neutered. Oh, wow. have been, oh and I forgot. Um, we had a, a red-footed tortoise, a big one, put over... Right. I remember when that happened because I follow yeah. you guys, you know, on, on Facebook. And uh, right. it's always interesting to see what's going to happen. And then your whole uh, cattle thing, you know, the they're, what are they, miniature? What are they? They're, they're Zebu cattle. Zebu. They're similar to Brahma, but they're only um, 
Most of mine are uh, 38 inches or smaller. Okay. I've seen some Probably. of those before. I think Carl Oz up in Minnesota had some Zeboos, and some other people did too up there. Yeah, so, yeah. If Mrs. Roger, um, um, Jan got in touch with me, and she's got some right down the road from her oh, where okay. she lives. That's and cool. I believe I believe some of the Mosiers actually raised some of them as okay. well. That's cool. Well, you know, it's funny that kind of ties us into POAs because when POAs started, it almost had an exotic feel to it or look and a lot of people that had exotic animals started getting POAs because they were new you know it was something brand new a spotted yep. pony breed hadn't existed in the United States and it wasn't a little Shetland that was they were really popular in the 50s and then they started dying out and it wasn't a big quarter horse or Appaloosa or you know any type of horse like that so yeah it kind of took on its own feel uh when yeah your... and that's Go that's ahead. originally how we got started, was, got um, started? we raced yeah we raced shetlands and showed shetlands and hackney oh, okay. um well i w i wasn't born by then because i'm <laughs> I, I came later but um that's how they started was they originally started with um shetlands and Hack hackney and that was in the 50s um and then they ended up purchasing the farm that i live on now um uh, wooden shoe ranch uh, which is approximately 20 acres in Plant City, Florida, and that's known as the winter strawberry capital of the world. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, it, um, but my father was a contractor, and he wanted to move the kids out of the city, and we came out, he, they came out here, and um, my mom saw an ad uh, in a horse magazine about POA. Oh, cool. And they were actually looking for something that was more, um, not as high-spirited, and something more because at that time she had four kids and one on the way, me. Um, and um, so they wanted something that was smaller. And you might have to help me with this. The first international they went to was in the 60s, and I want to say it was either in Kansas or Nebraska. Okay. And Danny Boy was there, um, Court Scottish Chieftain and other stallions. But they ended up going out to that, okay. and when they came back, um, she was she, she was, was on a mission. My mom, Kitty Van Eyck, was on a mission. Um, <laughs> well, it was we in had, the, the, it was in Utah, and then it was yeah, that might have been in Utah. It, but... Yeah, it was somewhere out there, and okay. I, I I'll apologize. I'm in my 60s now, and I have had a couple <laughs> strokes, so dates aren't the best thing I remember right. but when she came back we had actually my family was very very involved with the Florida State Fair and has always been um, involved with the Florida State Fair from as long as I can remember and we knew the um, Commissioner of Agriculture and another man t called Charlie Knight and they knew that my father and mother were looking for POA and he Charlie Knight had brought in some POAs from out west and um, we went out there, or they went out there, and that's when they purchased Wouldn't Shoes Mr. D. Okay. Um, he was out of a Palomino um, mare, and um, black with a white blanket, and he is a Coretz Comanche son. Coretz Comanche, okay. I believe, yeah, uh, I believe, I thought it was Scottish Chieftain, but I actually, you actually helped me out with that when I was <laughs> doing the Hall of Fame stuff. Okay, Comanche's um, the son of Scottish Chieftain, so yeah. Right, the grandson. yeah. Um, oh. And uh, we bought, we actually purchased two stall young stallions. Uh, we bought a half-brother to him uh, as well that was a blue roan with a white blanket, a uh, basic white blanket. And his name was um, Wooden Shoes Blue Patch. Oh, okay. And those were, those were the original two yeah, stallions. The original two, okay. And originally she did cross them with some of the Hackney mares. Um, she didn't breed them to the Shetland mares. Um, we had some other small mares here. Um, I don't, I have looked it up, but as far as I can remember, they were called Americana mares. Oh, um, right. They were um, really nice little mares, but that's what she started with. Back then, there were probably 12 registered POA stallions in the state of Florida. There okay. were not a lot of registered mares down here. Right. So my mother was always on the, the look. Um, and we didn't travel back then. So um, I can remember in 1967, um, Leslie Baumhauer came down and we did an exhibit for him of all of the breeders. And that's the meeting that they had where 
my mother and father were very influential starting the Florida POA Club. Okay. And that was in and the 60s, yeah, for sure. 67, I think it was, 1967. But we had actually started raising POAs. Um, they started raising POAs. I was born in 62, and we had spotted ponies on the farm then. Okay. Um, wow. But but we didn't. We weren't. We had not gotten in really to uh, the showing and stuff. And then um, once the club started, at that point, um, my father and mother were very very influential in getting this club going. And um, my mother was the secretary from 1967 till I believe 2002. Wow, that's Off and a long on. time. That's a yeah, long time. yeah. And I know she um, did a lot of stuff outside of POA to promote POA, didn't she? She drug you oh guys my to gosh. all kinds of fairs and parades. My and- mother, <laughs> you know, and you know, I'll be honest with you, I don't see a lot of that today. Um, my mother would take every opportunity she could. Right. If uh, we rode the Gasparilla Parade, and I was five years old on a, on a pony out there in the middle of that parade. I mean, we rode... Um, mall openings any opportunity um we went i was on howdy duty with a two-year-old um wouldn't choose milkshake um two-year-old stallion um dressed in full indian costume (laughs) and i think i was six or seven but any opportunity that my mother could in the 70s the commissioner of agriculture got in touch with my mother and um, Florida was doing a big ag, ag expo for South America, and there were going to be three to 5,000 delegates, and they were all farmers, breeders, and everything. And our family was chosen to represent the POA breed. Oh, and cool. my mother told him no. Really? And she, yeah, well, there was a reason. She said that we weren't the only breeder in Florida, and if, if we couldn't bring an exhibit of the POAs with other breeders, that we were going to sit out and they actually opened up and let us. And I think three families brought <laughs> POA to the fair, uh, to the fairgrounds. And, um, I think you're going, everybody's going to find that, um, after that POAs were shipped out of, uh, Miami and they were sent to South America. Um, our bloodlines went, but none of our direct ponies that we had here at the house, actually went but they were babies that we had actually sold to other people okay. that went down there that was in uh, the mid 70s okay. um and as far as i know that was one of the first times that it was ever recorded because i remember them um we were as a little kid we were questioning if they were going to ship them on a ship or if they were flying them over <laughs> but i don't remember exactly how many went but um, that was in the 70s. So okay. she did any opportunity she got to promote the breed. We promoted the breed. Right. I mean, I knew that um, about her. I knew that she was a big promoter and did things, you know, outside of POAs. To oh, my mother gave more ponies to people that had <laughs> multiple kids in their families and they could not afford to get so many ponies for her, for their kids and and show. I cannot tell you how many ponies, registered ponies, that my mother actually donated to families with no expectation as long as they took care of them right. and showed them that um, she did a lot to try to keep the, keep it going. But that helped she was, families in, too, and see what it was Oh, we ha- I, I know of a family in Orlando that... Um, that we gave one to that's still over there and their great grandkids are showing right now. So, <laughs> well, so yeah, good. there are still families that are, that, that we touched in that way. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Well, that's cool. My mother was very big on, um, they had to have brains first. The way she bred was she bred for intelligent confirmation and color. And I know that's going to sound to all of the color <laughs> people out there that are breeders, very strange. But my mother never forgot that this was a for kids, right. a youth, and it didn't matter how pretty it was. If it didn't have the right com- uh, brains, yeah. it did not go in our breeding program. Well, that's good. That's um, why, why she was that, so good at breeding, too. So. Yeah, yeah. and um, we were lucky enough that um, we have a premier sire, that we, that we have Florida's first bred and raised premier sire, wouldn't choose soda pop. Um, 
Um, we've had multiple, multiple high sellings throughout the year, and um, we supremed ourselves five horses. Wow. And there are actually um, five more wooden shoe ponies that I'm aware of. Now, I've been out for a long time um, that are actually supremed as well. And then I got to get this out there. The, the horse that went through Las Vegas actually carries our bloodline as well. The I got high a selling. Of him. Yeah, right, yeah, right there. The guy, the cowboy standing um, on top of him. Yeah. And I have to thank the pony farm <laughs> because they took wooden shoes, silver, and gold, a very nice little stallion, and um, used him and did very well and made us very, very proud um, that, that he's. He continued on breeding and stuff. Right. Yeah, that's a good looking rascal there, and he sold for a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think I think for a while he held the record, if right. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know, and I don't know if you have a picture of Wooden Shoes Mr. D that you had put up, but he was black with a white blanket. He was never defeated. He was shown in halter and ridden, but he was never defeated in halter. It would make my mom so nervous to get him ready because she was so scared that somebody – that she he was just her baby she so that she actually retired him did she really um you put a picture showing. of him on your your facebook page and i'll i'll yeah. put a picture of him up i i didn't have too many pictures up on okay. here but i will put okay. some more so. um but um we were actually offered a blank check for him in the 70s and i think my mother would have sold him but my my father would not do it oh, really? um yeah um it was a quarter horse breeder that had come from out west. They had seen him and heard him, heard about him, and they came down and he wanted him, and that was it. He wanted him, and he wanted. Him. But D was striking. He was a striking black and white with a blanket with the tiniest ears and the prettiest little quarter horse head. And we're talking about in the late '60s, early '70s. And if you look back, um, the theory bloodlines carried the really pretty heads, but there wasn't a lot of real pretty heads back in, (laughs) back in the day. There was some dragons and yeah, just some ponies (laughs) for sure. You you hit that uh, right on. I'll tell you, um, the premier sire wouldn't choose soda pop. His mother was wouldn't choose mini dot. And the story from her, um, when we purchased her was they were brought in from Mexico and she was a small, uh, very small, flea bitten Appaloosa had all characteristics mare, and we hardshipped her at the time because back then you could hardship mares. Um, and that mare produced Wouldn't You Soda Pop, which is the premier sire. The mare produced. Um, so she had a, a story in history very much like Dragon, wow. as, that we were told that she actually was swum across the river or swam across the river wow. and then brought out of Texas into Florida. Okay. And um, so, like I said, back then, mares were, were not a big commodity down here. My mother, over the years, brought more than 50 mares into the state of Florida, and 50 is a low number, to be honest with you. A lot of um, them came that, from the sale, didn't they? She would a lot of them the from the sale yeah. and a lot of from private buyers. Um, their first time they went to the international sale was in uh, – it was, I believe it was Mason City, Iowa, and when she went, she was on a mission to bring leopard mares back, <laughs> and that very first year that was in, um, I'm going to say it was in the 70s, um, she brought back eight leopard mares wow. and two bays with white blankets. She brought back a daughter of um, Lady of Paint. She brought back two series um, red mares. Uh, one was Siri Sheik and then um, a WPF Diamond Jim daughter, okay. um, Cahoka Chief daughter, uh, Joker B da- uh, granddaughter, and then some of you old folks out there might remember Polly G. Polly, Polly G. came out of Polly came out of Illinois, beautiful bay, uh, white stockings, white blanket. Um, Mr. Mosier can't. Dick Mosier came to us after we purchased her and said that Illinois was glad to see Polly leave. <laughs> <laughs> I have pictures of her I can put up tonight or tomorrow. Polly G. Yeah. yeah. And she, yeah. she went um, to Florida. So you guys, really, yeah. she really helped Florida uh, with the, yeah. the stock. Uh, 
she um and we actually did breed Polly later in year in her older years and she threw some actually really nice babies for us. Um but Polly was mostly a riding horse. Okay. Um and we didn't start showing on the road until the seventies. Um and that was our Sedalia, Missouri was our first international. We took uh Polly G and we took Wooden Shoes Dandy, which was a little gilding that we had bred and raised out of Mr. D. I placed in, I went in 12 events and placed in nine. Wow. And the reason why I'm telling you this story is this is how my mother bred her horses. Um, we continued showing that summer on the road, and it was very new to us, so we hit as many shows as we could. And at the last couple of shows, we've noticed that Dandy was having some issues, perfectly healthy, but we just noticed that something was off, and we ended up taking him a vet to a vet there. Um, Dandy was 90% blind in one eye and 100% blind in the other wow. eye. And we had been, that horse jumped, <laughs> that horse ran barrels, that horse did everything with me. Um, that's the kind of little horses my mother and father raised. Intelligence and heart. And Sounds, very trusting and yeah, big heart. Yeah, um, that's cool. And that was what it was about for her was, was um, she loved the confirmation. She that. The Siri bloodlines were one of her favorites. Okay. Um, and then Gene Carr got in touch with us. Um, he told us about a little stallion, a weanling stallion that he had named Santee Hancock Bar, and that he would be taking him to the futurities and he would go through the sale. So my mother decided she was buying him, and Hancock actually won the futurity that year. And we purchased him and brought him home. And that year, she brought another eight leopard mares wow. and um, some double invest. We actually had our um, double tough fillies home. We actually had to go to all of the Florida people at the sale that had horse trailers <laughs> and make arrangements for all of them to come home. That year, she didn't go there specifically purchasing just for us. She always knew that when the mares came back here, if they didn't fit in our breeding program, they would fit in someone else's probably. Right. So she was always remembering that some of these mares are going to go to other breeders, and they did. And so that was part of her way of improving the bloodlines in Florida. Right. And, sure. and she, was, she was helping not only herself, but she was helping everybody in her mind. And it wasn't a, a bad thing. It was a, these, some, some of the breeders didn't travel and didn't have the access to some of the mares, right. the quality mares. Right. Um, and that's way before the Internet where you could just see a catalog yeah. of horses online all the time and just, you know, yeah. get them transported. Yeah. That's cool. That and was, it, I have a picture of uh, Hancock bars on there now. You're holding him. I think you're cut off in the picture a little bit. That's a picture of uh, he. I think he. I think that's actually his yearling yeah, picture. Yeah, he's pretty. Young, he might have been coming two year old. Two yeah. year old. Yeah. And I have some um, other pictures of him too. So, and I also have pictures on YouTube if people want to go. It's called Episode Three. It's not this type of show, but it was called POA History Live. Remember when I did that? Antonio right. Yeah, and it was a quick 15 minute deal. I was having some right, technical right. problems, but there's some cool pictures on there. That 74 show in Missouri, I just seen it today. I rewatched that episode. And there's a picture of you guys at that show. Uh, in the oh, room. is there? Yeah. Oh, that, I'd have the, to look at that. I have wooden well, shoes. Well, a lot of people Mr. D on there. A lot of people didn't realize um, Hancock was actually out of our our series silver, right. which. Hancock was Siri bred, and then he was out of St. T. Rose Hancock, which was a uh, quarter horse mare of Fiends, and I believe she produced the other Hancock. Right. She was an Appaloosa mare. Rose the Appaloosa Hancock. mare, yeah. yes. I seen yes. her in person um, when she was really old, but yeah, she produced the, the Santee Hancock, the big red horse. That, yep, like and that. then um, there was another mare, Santee Sue Hancock. Um, yep. He actually contacted us about her, and she ended up so Fernandez down here bought her, and she ended up a supreme champion as well. Okay. But um, a lot of people didn't realize, unless they did a background look on him, that he had the, he carried the Siri bloodlines. Right. Um, that was an important bloodline that my mother wanted to always influence with these bloodlines. So I bet she and, got along really well with, like, Keystone and some of those Iowa breeders. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
there was an older couple. Um, I had their names, and Allison Esler was here with me at Christmas. She came down and stayed with me at Christmas. Um, she knew the people I was talking about, but they bred um, Siri Sheik okay. bloodlines, all black and white leopards. Right. Um, I want to say her last, uh, the first name was Doris, but anyways, um, she, those people, um, we got to know the Mosiers and the Stones and all of those very early on. Right. Um, my mother dealt with them when the club was being set up as well. Right. So, because to get more information on how to do things and stuff. So um, we were very fortunate that we were, throughout the years, we became very close with families throughout all over the United States. Right. Isn't that um, funny when you learn, you, just like Allison, you know what I mean? You're still friends with her all these years later. Oh, <laughs> gosh, I've known Allison over 50 years now. Right. I don't age her too much, but yeah. She, I, I want to get her on here and do trivia. She came on and did a show one time, and it was kind of like this show. We're getting so many great comments because people just like hearing these stories, you know, because you were there as a kid, and you, and you heard the stories from your mom anyway, you know, but then you were there, and uh, you can tell and Allison's the same way. She can tell these great stories uh, about. Yeah, with my mom and I, um, we would every year she would bring when the sale catalogs came in. I started actually helping out with the breeding. We always, a lot of us kids rode mares. And back then, your mare was going to have a baby, whether you were showing her or not, because she was part of the broodmare program, too. So, you know, we were very used to having a mare that had a baby on her side, um, a sidekick with us all the time. So, um, <laughs> excuse me, I lost my train of thought there. But, um, it, like I said, it was not unusual for us to, to, be, to have five kids and three of the horses had babies on their side. Right, that's funny. Yeah, they weren't just bird mares. They had to be shoe no, mares too. Some no, of them. That, yeah, that's the one thing later in, in our years, um, what we tried to do with every mare that we purchased, we tried to at least show her until she got all her grains and reserves for her ROM. Okay. Um, because my mother knew that um, most of these mares were going to go into the breeding program, but she had to prove that those mares could stand their own in the halter class as well. So they may not have had all their points, but a lot of them did have their grand and grand and reserves right. so that they could be finished out. Um, and that was something that, that was just something that she kind of settled on. That, she instilled um, in that too. Yeah. yeah. And, keep, <laughs> and following those rules and stuff that, you know, that it helps sell horses like that and ponies and help. Well, the you know, we've been through all the height changes and, and all of that. And I'll be honest with you. Um, my mother was not one for, she did not care for the height changes right. because the breed was changing. And we, we were not inept to the fact that progress, you had to progress. But the fact is that um, this was a pony breed, and that's why we got into it, that it was a pony breed. So um, we, we crossed with some quarter horses and some Appaloosas. And, yes, some of our horses that we purchased were um, considered half Appaloosa, but they were registered POA. But my mother always um, tried to stay within it. She did not try to push our horses to 56 Right. when they matured she wanted them that there was no question that they could be taken right out there and measured and there wasn't a question right. you know um and that was one thing that i'll be honest that is one thing that really has had affected her later in breeding was um seeing a lot of the she felt that, yep that there were a lot of big horses coming into the breed right it, when it went to <laughs> I 14 have a, hands it definitely did you know well, I have a most beautiful two-eyed Jack Quarter Horse Stallion. He's a little over 15 hands. And I raised him from a baby, and he's thrown the most beautiful Quarter Horse babies for us here. I only bred him to one POA mare because of the fact that he's I felt as though he was too big. Yeah. And People are his breeding baby. Those, those. It used to be, you know, you'd get the Quarter Horse Journal, and you'd breed to, like, a son or a grandson of the one you've seen in the journal. Well, now people breed to 
the famous horse. Direct, you know? yeah, direct, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and they are taller. They're 15, 15, 3, you know. So you well, know. you know, it's funny. My mom always thought about the mayor carrying that baby because I raise miniatures. I have to be very careful how I breed them. Right. Because I will have complications with babies. And my mother looked at the same same looked at it the same way that if this was a small mare, that um, a good producing mare, there's too many other stallions that she can be bred to that she can produce a high quality baby to. And I'm just gonna say it instead of my mother used to say the flavor of the d- month or the flavor of the week. <laughs> oh, now Kent, Kent, I don't know how well you know my mother, but my mother was the most nice person you ever met but when it came to her horses and this breed she could be pretty stern about what you know right. that well, she this was what she liked and she knew what she believed in so and I, I i think that if you look at our horses that our horses um were actually a little bit in florida a little bit behind their, uh, 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 in front of their time because we did have very typey um, quarter horse type looking horses in the early 70s and there wasn't a lot of uh, breeding down here you know I mean so she was able to make our POAs modern but we didn't have to go that way right I as far it. as breeding to the giant stallions and yeah. I, I know I know I know and I know there's going to be some people out there that are going to completely disagree with me but I've been doing this since I was 12 years old and I'm in my 60s right. <laughs> and, I, and, and <clears throat> even with my little cows, I have to be very careful um, and think about that mother, not think about what baby's coming out of that mother, but think about that mother right. because she's more important to me than this baby. Because if you lose the mother, you're done. You know, you lose and the, you're right. You lose the you're father. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So and I was, I'll I'm be honest. To, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you you go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just gonna not to change the subject, but I was gonna shed a little light on some of the supreme champions. I know I don't have all of them, but uh, some we haven't mentioned: Tough Taboo and Sam Peppy. They're both wooden shoes. Uh, yes. Those were supreme. Um, and then of course cactus. wooden shoes, cactus. Yeah, cactus juice. And then wooden shoes popsicle was actually PLA's 100th supreme champion. They have him on the website as Wooden Shoes Popside, and I'm going to get oh, that it's pop, It's actually Popsicle. <laughs> yeah. um, as you can tell, my father, <laughs> that was my father. When my okay. mother and I took over the breeding, we did not name them crazy names like that because okay. we had popcorn. We had all kinds of names. And then um, we also, horses that we did not raise was um, Red Snapper, but was Supreme Champion, Rocket Tim, Supreme Champion, Flashes Beauty, um, Lennon's SS Sticky, and then we mentioned Cactus Juice, and Cactus Juice actually was the leading first place winner of one international at one time for many, many years, and if you have to correct me, but I believe he won 12 first place at that international. He did. International. 1980 in New York, he won 12 classes, yeah. And, and he re- he held that record for a very, very long time. Right. Um, um, he's very here on the farm, actually. Okay. Um, a lot of our older Supreme Champions, my mom wasn't one to turn around and sell them. <laughs> they right. they stayed that. here. The mares went into our breeding programs. And then we did, um, well, I'm just trying to think, um, Wouldn't Shoes, uh, Golden Hancock actually uh, won, the inter- uh, won his select sire fraternity and actually uh, went on to be the high selling that year. She had back-to-back Wouldn't Shoes, Sugar and Spice, with high selling yearling filly at the international and the next year we came back with another yearling filly wooden shoes um cute and sassy and she was high selling as well she had high selling filly with wooden shoes um dixie doll at um tennessee sale and high selling yearling stud colt with wooden shoes mudslinger at tennessee sales as well <laughs> mudslinger yeah 
Another one and, is uh, Wooden Shoes Dutch Doll, or maybe you said, yes, I think which Tom, are the more, yeah, I believe she's a Supreme, too. Uh, Tommy Morris wrote her, Tom Morris. Uh, I yeah, I actually, year. that's a family that is very close to our hearts, mm-hmm. and um, they've, they've, always, they've always been very good people to us, and we've always, one of the, one, that was one of the families that, my mother, we had to go see them <laughs> when we got to wherever we were going. We right. had to go talk to them. Right. Um, and he actually uh, we showed her at the fraternity, and she was supposed to come home because she was supposed to be my horse. Okay. But when Mr. Morris came and talked to us, uh, we were like, you guys can buy her from us. <laughs> yeah. And then Taboo ended up in California. Okay. Um, I I, I, rem, I talked to her owner not not long ago, um, and then uh, we haven't mentioned Double Investment. And Double mm-hmm. Investment actually um, was out of Tough Cookie, and a Doc Barbell mayor. Um, so, but he is actually the one that produced um, Wouldn't You Silver and Gold, who okay. has what is the one horse that went through Las Vegas. That right. the high selling. Yeah, he's a little few spot staying that the pony farm had. Or had yeah, had. I think they lost him a, a few years back. Mm-hmm. I've always kept any kind of contact with them. Right. Um, but I, I don't know. We showed from early 60s until 2000, I want to say 6 was when we kind of phased out. Okay. Uh, my father had passed away and my mother remarried in he was not a horse person and <laughs> Go she complete she completely changed her life and um at that point i took over the farm um and the horses and we kind of phased out i just two years ago sent the last colt that we raised which was wooden shoes um sporting class and i actually bred him and we sent him to debbie smith out in pennsylvania um, and then my little stallion, Richard Stout, back steps, and we sent to Shannon Clark in California. I have a picture of him. We have cactus juice on right now, but here we go. Here's your little leopard stud that you uh, had. Yeah. Stetson. Yeah. Yeah. Stetson. And, and he, she, um, she got him out there, and unfortunately he had some uh, developed some health issues, but she was able to get him bred um, to three mares, and um, unfortunately um, – after a long discussion, she put him down. Oh, I'm sorry. So, um, but he had he had been sitting here for a while, so um, at least he was able. We were able to get some of his bloodline because he was very well bred. Right. Um, for a for a under fifty stallion, um, I think that he could have pretty much given anybody a run for his money as far as fifty and under. Right. Um, and he might have given the big stallions. He just. We just did not have the opportunity to show, to take him on the road and show. And I thought it would be best to send him to someone who could breed him and use him. Right. So there's another baby. She's got, um, there's a baby due in 30 days and another one due in 90 days. So oh, we're real anxious. Cool. So, so our bloodlines are still out there. They're still out there, yeah. And he actually, Rich's about like Stetson is a grandson of Double Investment. Okay. So I actually purchased him back. Um, Donna Zimmerman actually had him and I as a baby. And uh, a local neighbor called me and said, there's a little PLA stallion I, I bought. Come see him. And I, <laughs> for three years, I tried to buy him from her. <laughs> and finally, she gave him, let, let me buy him. And um, that's how we got a PLA stallion back on the property. Okay. And we did, we bred him um, to a few mares and got really nice babies out of them but they actually sold local and um right. that's sport. my connection with you too is because his bottom side is bounce bounce by yep. none and she's it, the daughter yep. of uh, uh bounce back jack who we raised we were the breeders of him and we had yeah and actually yeah you're you're very right you corrected me because i was talking about him on the website one day and you jumped right in there and said, hey, don't forget his other side. Yeah, <laughs> and okay. I was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, no, I didn't mean like that. Right. I was just, you know. I, I got to um, tell a quick story happened in my kitchen. One of the first times we had interaction lately, this was probably 10 years ago, I put a picture of 
uh, I think it was Sam Pepe or somebody, and it auto-corrected the wooden shoes. And you come on there uh-huh. kind of sternly, and you're like, my family raised this. It's called wooden shoe. And I wrote really back, I know who wooden shoe is. I've known about him since I was eight years old. I said, a stupid auto-correct. <laughs> <laughs> I almost threw my phone across the kitchen. I was like... Now I embarrass myself to ban it. No, you didn't. <laughs> I'm, and everybody, anybody will tell you I'm not that way. But I got to. I'll just tell you. This is what wooden shoe came from. My fa- my grandfather was actually a Dutch immigrant okay. um, from Amsterdam, and so um, when we moved to the farm, when they came to the farm, my father wanted to play off of something Dutch. But he didn't want to put wooden shoes the way it should be spelled. <laughs> so he came up with that, right. uh, the W-U-D-I-N. And it also has a double meaning because in the South, people talk and they have a tendency to run words together. And it sounds like, wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't you want to do something? W- wouldn't you want to buy that pony? Yeah, wouldn't you? W- yeah. yeah. I didn't know but, the Dutch. I knew your name, you know, is Dutch, of course. But uh, I didn't know that's where it came from. But that makes perfect yeah. My sense. my cool. grandfather was the Dutch vice counselor in Tampa. Oh, okay. Um, wow. So um, so we were very involved in all of that as well growing up. And my dad was like, "This is too hotty totty. We're getting out." <laughs> and he brought us out to the country. But I will tell you this: I met a new neighbor not too long ago. I've had the property here now for almost seventeen years, and. Um, It was a new neighbor, and we were talking to another neighbor, and he finally looked at me, and he said, so where do you live? And I pointed at the Wooden Shoe Ranch sign because we were up on the road, and I went, I live at Wooden Shoe Ranch. And he turned around and looked at me, and he goes, you live with the Chinese people? (laughs) (laughs) The Chews. You live with the Chews. That's funny. And I about died. I went, oh, my God, it's been... 50 something years and people still can't figure uh, out that that's wooden shoe. Wooden shoe, yeah. That's, that's wooden shoe, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, that makes I perfect miss- sense. That was worth having this episode right there, finding out about the Dutch name and your grandpa. And yeah, that was that's cool. That's well, cool. we lost my mom. Uh, you're going on over almost six, seven years now. Right. And um, when uh, she was sick and I we I spent a lot of time with her. We spent a lot of time talking about POAs. Right. I I'm going to get a little choked up, but um, I understand. That was her. Um, that that was one of her loves of her life was was this breed, and right. um, and she was honored she just, by going in the Hall of Fame. She got to see that, right? Or was and it? I'm going to tell you a little story about that. Okay. We didn't tell her until after we were sure. And then we told her because at that point she was already starting to have some health issues and she fully intentions on going, but she got, when I told her, she got so mad at me (laughs) and I couldn't figure it out. And then finally I looked at her and these were her exact words. There are other people out there that deserve it more than I do. And those people should be nominated before me. I about, I had a heart attack right. because I was like, oh, my gosh, woman, you have done so much right. throughout this that you still just can't say, okay, Very you know, humble. And, Very humble um, and up until right before we were starting to plan for the trip, um, she had fully intention on coming with us, but um, unfortunately, um, it just wasn't wasn't meant to be and and she just at last minute health wise she just wasn't able to come with us right right so that was uh but that was one of the biggest that you don't know how much that meant to her right um I mean, and I mean, to a lot that. to her kids and to you guys too in a, in well a it was at a time in in all of our lives that um it was really hard right i get it yeah your mom was one of those rocks, you know, that raised her kids in it. And, and like you say, then later in her life, she just went a different direction, you know. And but Oh, like night and day. Right. But, <laughs> but then now, when you wanted to talk to her about it, she would just turn it back on and talk about POAs. It meant that much to her. Oh, gosh, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't realize this. My, it wasn't my – everybody used to think that it was my dad that was the horse person. 
my mother grew up on like 3,000 acres of, in South Florida back in the 40s where her stepfather had run cows and she, there's pictures of her when she was a, a small child riding through the woods bareback with a, with a fawn on, <laughs> in her arms because that was her pet. Right. Um, so um, she would tell us about uh, doctoring screw worms and you don't even hear about that stuff now, you know. Right, right. Um, but it was actually my mom. My mom, um, and I, I, she rode, uh, she did ride actually, and a lot of people don't realize that. Um, when I was seven years old, there was an accident and um, she broke her leg. Hmm. And after that, she could not ride as, as much as she wanted to. Okay. Um, but my mother was an avid horse rider growing up. Right. And she knew, you know, she knew her stuff when she came to talking about these horses and stuff. Right. And that's why she bred so well, too, because she knew horses. She knew what she wanted. Definitely the POA. She knew what she wanted in them. And uh, before I let you go, I need you to talk about some of the covers that your mom put together and what she put you guys through to do those covers. <laughs> and I know well, that could be an episode in itself. I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, but um, if you look back in the 50s and the 60s, the magazine covers were unbelievable back then because you see the one where the elk on the horse, right. where they're leading and stuff. So my mother had gotten really tired of, and no offense, but really boring um, to her. She wanted to show that our horses could do stuff. <laughs> so that that one that you posted, I think that was in 19, December of 1980. Yeah. Um, that was my last year. And Rocket Tim was unbroke. He'd only had a saddle on him a few times, and I'd been on him a few times. We started out that day with cactus juice, um, but the smoke was just going in Cactus's face. And Cactus, even though Cactus was such a good pony and everything, Cactus could be get a little spooky at times. Um, so we ended up swapping them out. It took us hours to get that picture taken. Um, we had borrowed the calf, and thank goodness my sister lived on a very long dirt road because when she got to take the calf back, the trailer had come open and the calf fell out on the dirt oh, road. <laughs> so she had to go back and get the calf. And in between all of the takes, Rocket was actually bucking. Oh. So we would have to catch pictures, catch the picture when he'd calmed down, and finally... Mom said, let him go down like he's going to eat and see if that stops him. Right. Um, and that's when we got that picture. His, his um, neck arch. I got it up there now for everybody to see. With him, yeah. with his neck arch. Yeah, yeah that's but, cool. And if you look in the back, that's on the second farm. We had um, a second farm that was called the Wooden Chew 2 that we raised cows on. And that's, that was up in Zephyr Hills. That little dog in the background was not supposed to be in any pictures, <laughs> and that little dog, George, made himself in every picture. Now, Mom was mad because I had chewing tobacco in my mouth, and Tim and Daryl were really mad because they had to stay in front of the fire for hours in the smoke. Right. It was just, it took us hours, but... <laughs> That magazine cover, when it came out, oh, that's still talked had about a very me. big influence. Yeah, there will on... be people tonight that see it for the first time, and they'll be right. wowing about it. You know, they'll because it was especially for 1980. But like you said, it kind of went almost graduation pictures. You know, it was and no offense to anybody, but it'd be a no, 17 no, 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 or 18 year old girl holding her pony in a show halter, or maybe sitting on it. You know, and that was the covers, and they were in black and white, by the way. 80 was the first year it went to color because you guys color. did the 79 cover. You did a, a kind of a, not a black, quite like this, but it was black and white. Right. Yeah. That was when that year, actually, Kim, Daryl, and I were all in the top 10 horse and riders. Wow. And I think Daryl was up like in one or two somewhere in there with Cactus. Um, we had all ridden Cactus. Right. But when Daryl 
started riding him at the age of five years old. Something clicked. They were un. <laughs> and I'll tell you a little secret. Cactus was not the easiest little pony. Daryl Wesley got bucked off in every state that we went to <laughs> with him with that pony. Every state. And some people would get so mad at us because they – and, but Daryl, five years old, would get right up, and he didn't care where that horse was at. He was getting back on him, and he was going to ride. Um, that that we never expected that cover to go like that because our horses were used on the other farm for the cows and stuff like that. So, and we did brand our own cows, and we did butcher our own cows and stuff like that back then. So it was not unusual for us to mom to pull the trailer out and say, Hey, we've got to go work cows, load the horses. Right. And we were out there with the POAs doing that because that our horses did whatever my mother said they could do. Right. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and they did. Yeah. So, um, like Flash's Beauty, Flash's Beauty, you could rope off of her. Oh, she was a great roping horse. Um, but you didn't ever realize that right. when she was showing, right. you know, that mare could run a 19 in pole. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Yeah. So, but, um, the cover that, like I said, that, that really changed. Um, I still, to this day, when people, I'll be honest with you, I got letters from all over the world <laughs> from girls. Really? <laughs> yes, after that cover went public. I got a phone call from Holland from someone I had no idea who they were just to talk to me about POAs and and, and letters and stuff. So it was it was kind of a different for us because it wasn't we just took pictures. Right. We just did, we were taking pictures. You didn't know um, it was going to be as big as it was. No, so. no. And my, me and Allison, when she was here in December... I, I talked her ears off, but um, we talked about that, and just it did. We never thought that it would go that viral, um, right. but it did. And to this day, it's that was done in '80, and we're in 2024. Right. <laughs> wow. And people still contact me and go, "I can't believe that magazine cover." Yeah. I'm like, it. She was a little behind before her time with the way she thought about advertising them. Absolutely. And that's funny um, about the dog. He's an original photo bomber. You know, that wasn't even a mm-hmm. saying back then, a photo bomb, but he, he did it. He And I like the hats, you know, the big old hat and that even you're wearing is a pretty big hat, big brim. Well, know? that was one thing mom, mom all let us get away with was we had to be dressed properly for Western Pleasure or whatever, but our hats were our hats, and it didn't matter <laughs> She wasn't a stickler about that you had to have a perfect little show hat. My hat had been run over so many times, and Daryl, too. Um, but that was the one thing was that I always, she just never bothered us about that. Right. Um, my mother, um, I always showed white horses, basically white horses. So my horses had to be washed the night before. And... Um, I was probably about 15, and we were in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and all the kids wanted to get together and do something afterwards, and I walked up to her, and there was probably about 10 kids with us, and we walked. I walked to the motorhome, and I looked at her and said, I'm going to go with them, and I'll get up at 4 and wash the horses. And she looked at me, and she said, no, you're not. <laughs> you're going to go wash your mares. And I said, Mom, you know me. I'll get up at 4, and I'll wash the mares. And she said, like I said, you're going to walk. I said, no, I'm going. So she said, all right, you can go. You step in here one time and talk to me for a minute. And I stepped into that camp room. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you a reason why. There's a reason why you'll understand this story. My mom slapped me across the face so hard. <laughs> she gave me a nosebleed. Oh, geez. And when I, op- when I opened that camper, <laughs> she goes, you're going to go wash your horses, aren't you? I was like, yes, ma'am. I opened that camper. I heard one kid say, oh, my God, look what his mother's done. (laughs) That was in the 80s. Tony DePew and I talked not too long ago. And Tony DePew 
said to me, I want to know, want you to know one thing. And I said, what's that? And he goes, I loved your mother to death and respected her more than anybody. He goes, that day she slapped you and bloodied your nose and made you go wash your horses. <laughs> he goes, I never said anything but yes, ma'am, to your mother from then on. <laughs> and I went, my mom wasn't being mean to me. I was being disrespectful to her and my horses. She taught you a life lesson. Nobody washed our horses. We washed our own horses. Right. Nobody trained. We never had a trainer until we were probably, I was 16 before I ever took a riding lesson from anyone. Right. Ever. She did not bring trainers and stuff like that. We started them from ground and we rode them. Right. Till they, you know, and then that's just the way it was. The only time she brought a trainer in was when we learned how to ride English. Other than that, my mother she was, was basically the trainer. She was lesson. the, yep, yeah, she was the one. Yeah. But I just thought it was very funny that it was 30 something years later, 40 years later, and one of those boys still <laughs> says, oh no. And Tony, if your if mother you don't can, know Tony DePew, he's a big man now. You know, he's a big yeah. man. Yeah. Tony Dupuis, my brother from another mother. Right. Um, that's the one thing I will say about TOA, and I don't know if it is that way today, but back in the 70s and the 80s and early 90s, um, you had family everywhere. Right. You it had is, family it everywhere. It's kind of like that now. It's maybe not quite as much, but it still is. But I don't think it's like people got too much going on. Like families used to leave their kids, you know, at other houses sometimes, you know, oh my for, gosh. for weeks at a time, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Top. Yeah. Um, oh, the Ottens. Right. They would have tons of kids over at their places. Um, you know, I mean, sometimes when we were traveling, if somebody's fam some family found out that we were going to have some downtime, we took our horses to their house and we stayed with them right. in our motorhome. You know, I mean that, and to this day, I still have very, very good friends throughout the United States that, um, I still keep in touch with. And Allison, she will never go anywhere through <laughs> thick and thin. She will always be part of our family down here. Right. That's cool. Um, First time I met her was in the middle of February, and she was in a bikini on top of the <laughs> horse trailer at the Florida State Fair. <laughs> and my mother said, can you go out to the horse trailers and see if there's a girl laying up on top of a horse trailer in a bikini and come back and tell me if there is? And sure enough, that's when I met Allison. Even as an adult, <laughs> she'd wear the tube tops and stuff. Remember? <laughs> Even like that, when she was a board of directors, she'd wear stuff like that. Because it was hot. It was hot in the summer. So, yeah. But a lot she of people just don't realize that's Allison, and you're never going to change Allison, and I would never want to change Allison. Right. She's just been... Um, but, you know, like the Mosiers, the Morrises, um, and there's so many more that I could say... Um, that we we very much had very well, good connections with, and and they were family to us, and we looked forward right. to traveling, talking to them, and um, actually changing exchanging bloodlines with them as well. Right, right. Um, sure. Well, you should be proud of your mom, what she did, and your whole family, because people still remember it, you know. And and the newer people that don't, that's why we're talking about it. And there, people are enjoying the show; they're loving the show tonight because you're telling some great stories. So, and I know it's well, hard I'm, sometimes. I'll be, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm a big. I'm a Leo. I'm a big-hearted person, <laughs> and this was very difficult today because I cried most of the day. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I going. I was going through pictures. <laughs> And it started to dawn on me that a lot of these horses are no longer with us anymore. Right. And um, I was a midwife for for hundreds of horses right. because I, I started in the breeding program when I was very young with my mother. Um, I, I, the one thing I'll tell you is she would give me that cell catalog and I went bloodlines. I didn't even look at their pictures. Right. I went bloodlines. And then her and I would get together and look at the sale catalog that she marked, and we would see <laughs> if how we connected. And nine chances out of ten, she'd pick out the ones that I was picking out, 
But I got so good at the bloodlines in the 80s and 90s that I could sit in the stand and my mother could look at me and go, who's that horse and what's its bloodline? And I could just rattle it off. So um, I can't do that anymore. (laughs) I try to keep up with all the bloodlines now, and I can't do that anymore. Well, time moves on. It's starting to slip me a little bit because I stopped raising them, you know. And, boy, when you don't talk about it all the time or new bloodlines come in, you know. But I'm no, I think Dealey's very lucky to to have you because well, um, you gave me a compliment at one time too, <laughs> as as far as the knowledge that I had. And um, unfortunately, I had a couple strokes, and um, I'm doing good. I'm doing very well. Well, you sound um, good. You sound. But it kind of it kind of you know I I lost a little bit of memory and stuff that's coming back. But right. um, doing this actually is helpful well, with that good. because it makes you makes your brain think. Well, I didn't know if you would turn me down. You know, last time I did this, it wasn't an interview. I just talked, you know, about it. And I said, I really need him to come on here and just have a an old-fashioned podcast, you know, where we're just talking. I showed some pictures, but I could have showed hundreds of pictures, but I didn't want that. Oh, no, happen. I know. I, I, I tried to send you a few tonight that I thought were pertinent right, that and they you, were. Might, you might want to. And, use, um, people, and then I thought you might say, you know what, I'm just too emotional or I can't do it, you know, but I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad I thought, um, it's the breed is, is part of me and right. it will always be part of me. Um, unfortunately, life changes and we have three great grandchildren right now. All of the grandchildren showed. Um, we have three great grandchildren right now that are very small and um we'll see things um a couple of them show interest very much in the horses and um it might be something that we end up starting back in i don't know that we would start breeding again but right. you might end up seeing a, a kid out there again um <laughs> that'd be special that'd be cool i have I, i'll just say this because i'm sure some of my family is actually listening <laughs> I have all of the kids show saddles and everything still put away in the tra- in the horse trailer. Oh, there you go. Um <laughs> so I I still have all of that stuff. It's just that um we just have to, you know, we can't you can't force the kid to ride. Right, I get it. Yeah. But they have to want to do it and the opportunity has to be there and right. um that's the one thing my mother never did. She didn't force us to ride if we didn't want to ride. Um, there's six kids total and four of us or five of us actually rode one of them. She could have cared really less if she was with the horses or not. Right. (laughs) My dad was kind of heartbroken when I didn't ride, you know, not in shows, but I, you know, I didn't even, we used to ride on the place. I'd get off the school bus and he'd have two ponies sometimes he'd ride a quarter man or something but he'd have them saddled up and ready to go well as a little kid it just got to be like work you know what i mean for me it's like i get home from school and i gotta go riding and i finally told him dad i'm really not i love horses i just don't want to ride them every day you know and well then we bonded over the pedigrees like you said you and your mom you know and just the the breeding and stuff so i stayed active in horses i just he didn't force me to ride i'm glad he didn't right because i probably would have resented horses then you know if i had well you know i went show i went through that when i aged out yeah um i walked away for almost 10 years the only time i ever rode a horse is when i came home i got on with the airlines and moved in uh to texas and then moved to miami and just didn't um and then when i got back and took over the farm i did something very drastic the only horses i would bring in were wild mustangs and i brought in i had 12 come in that i broke and trained from i'm talking about put you out of the round pen you couldn't even go in with them um and i I just kind of specialized in that for a few years, and I ended up um, only two of those that I would not have sold as child um, kids ponies. Um, I was amazed how intelligent they were, how sturdy they were. Um, just um, and now I, I, I'm back to, but I don't do any. I trained for many years here privately at the house. Right. Uh, bringing in quarter horses and warm bloods, and I got hurt really badly by a young warm blood, um, really badly. And at that point, I decided 
if I'm going to get hurt by one, I'm going to get hurt by one of my own. You're right. And I stopped. And so I don't do any training anymore for anybody. I don't even give advice <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. that. It is an ass. So, you know, so <laughs> I know. No, no, no. I, I believe me. I know those people as well. <laughs> but um, I just enjoy. You know, I have I have a little paint mare now that I play with that I just picked up a year ago, and uh, I got a quarter horse gilding, and I still have my old brood mares here. I've got um, three quarter horse brood mares. that are about fourteen hands that are just outstandingly bred mares. Um, but I stopped breeding, so um, I. I will keep them here. Um, unfortunately, one as a two-year-old broke her neck in two places, oh. and she's a good broodmare, but um, you can't ride her or anything. And wow. um, I don't trust her going to anybody else. Um, so she'll stay here with me. Okay. Um, and if there were POA people here interested in them, I might be interested in sending them to them. But um, you never know. You might then, get contacted now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, their um, their foundation. Now I stick with the older bloodlines and right. their foundation, but they're um, um, I've got a um, Olena bred mare. Very this that's the cut. That's the mare that broke her neck. Um, okay. They paid close to eight or nine thousand dollars for her as a weanling, and she broke her neck right after they bought her. Oh. So I ended up with her after she came out of Gainesville University. She had had surgery there, and they were going to put her down. And I was like, no, I will take her. (laughs) And we've had her for 10, 15 years now. And she's produced some beautiful quarter horse babies for me. I do have a two-eyed Jack bloodline stallion here. That's uh, BJ Leaguer, two-eyed Jack, freckle scamp bloodline, quarter horse stallion. But everybody down here would like a lot of Florida PLA people would like to breed to him, but um, I I don't breed out anymore. Right. I don't I don't breed him anymore, and he's in his twenties. Yeah. So most of mine are all in their older years, and I don't mind. They produce nice babies for me, and I don't mind taking care of them for the rest of their life. So. Right. Well, Not you got you. a good place down there, and I enjoy following you on Facebook. So, well, we have, <laughs> there's always something going on. There's always something here going on. I'm surprised the producer hasn't knocked on you guys' door and said, we need to get a reality show going here. So. <laughs> you have no idea. I get told I need to write a book, right. and and I said, I I can't put videos out at the barn because we don't ever know what we're going to walk into out there. So I kind of have to preview everything before it hits. I can't do nothing live because uh, it's nothing nothing illegal or anything. It's just that I have no idea yeah, what, no. you know. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I'm expecting two baby calves, so, and I, um, I check them around the clock when they're capping because i try to imprint them oh, i try to good. breathe in their nose before mama does right. um zebus are a, a little bit on the wild and edgy side I so I um i have a new baby out front right now it's three days old i have a yearling that you're not going to believe this but she's not even 28 inches tall wow wow that's uh, i bet she's you cute. can still you could still pick her up and carry her around. <laughs> right. She's that tiny. Right. Um, but anyway, anything else I can well, help you I with? Well, I think that, and, was, that was a good uh, show. I'm glad you came on here. Like you say, you had kind of an emotional day. Sorry for that, but it's a good Oh, no, good no. Emotional, I have an emotional, emotional day every time I think about POA, <laughs> so right. it's not a big deal. Right. Well, um, my family was just so involved. It was really, it was kind of a hard thing for us to walk away, but um, life changes, and um, most important was our mother. Right. and taking care of that and um yeah. the horses um had done so much for her throughout the years that it was time for her to be able to do what she needed to do for the rest of her life and um i stepped in and took care of all of the poas until um we until they ate you know at age we ended up having to put them down and, right um you gave them a good home and yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually, double investment was the last POA that she actually had to put down. Um, 
here on the farm. And at that point, she actually said to me from now, because I couldn't be here when they did that. And right. so when I came home, she looked at me and said, that's the last one I'm doing. It's the rest, up to you now. The rest are up to you. It's right. up. So I stepped up and, um, I don't know. Every day I walk through this farm, I see her. So. Well, that's that's good too. That's part of it, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm so okay. glad you did this show, and uh, I'm glad we could honor your mother too, and kind of bridge the gap from the for the history. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and I appreciate it too. Um, I I really do appreciate you, and I I've, I've been able to reach out to you. You helped me with the Hall of Fame stuff, and. Um, I, I can't tell you how much that I don't think PLA realizes how lucky they are to have you as far oh, as being yes. able to. Well, you know a lot about the bloodlines in the background, and I'm one that I don't like to forget that stuff right. because right. that's where this breed came from. And yeah. I know that we got to look towards the future, but, you know, it's almost like we're going backwards. We started breeding big horses to small horses, and now all of a sudden it seems like it's gone backwards. <laughs> and um, this was a pony breed. It was always a pony breed. Oh, that's right. Um, not a small quarter horse breed <laughs> or a small colored quarter horse breed. And I'm going to say it out loud. I don't uh, – I'm a 60-year, 70-year breeder, you know. Oh. I mean um, – it needs to be said um, that we need to concentrate these bloodlines and keep these, keep our characteristics and keep identity. What all Ident of all identity. of those breeders that originated this breed. What was it? It was designed for. I understand a lot of adults are riding the horses, but guess what? A lot of adults rode the horses back then too. <laughs> yeah. And so, so I just, you know, I hope that we keep, keep that. We've always been a unique, unique breed. Yeah. And That's once right. we go past that, there's no going back really. Yeah. We need to keep our identity and, and the uniqueness. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, and that's something that old breeders bred for. And, that was something that um, you always thought about when you bred a mare. Yeah. You always thought about stallions. My, this is the last thing I'm going to say to to you and the breeders out there. Stallions are a dime a dozen. A good mare is the backbone of your breeding program. It's not the stallions. It's the mares. So you got to have good mares. Absolutely. And you got. You know, I mean, think about it. A mare only produces one baby a year. Now stallions can produce multiple babies. I mean, even then, you right. know what I'm saying? But right. um, that's the way my mom always thought was it the mares. The mares are the producers of the, of the breed you know, and of any mares. breed. Uh, we were always yep. that way in our program. We always, and if we could get a better mare, we got it and got rid of our least, you know. Well, my mom mare. had a rule. One comes in, two leaves. <laughs> One comes in, two leaves. That sounds yep. like my mom's it's rule, and she wasn't the horse person. So. so if she, if we went to the sale and we purchased two, then that meant that when she came home, Something to, it, we had to, we could not. At one time, my mom had over 35 POAs here. Right. Um, we had two farms, but still, that was a lot of POAs for us. Right. But, um, but yeah, it, that was the rule, was that, especially when you're bringing in new bloodlines, you know, you just, right. that, was it, that was it. One comes, two leaves. <laughs> and I, to this day, if I buy my cows, one leaves, two leaves. You know, one comes, two leaves. Two you know, so. yeah. All right, Kim. Well, it, I appreciate it. And to everyone out there, it's okay. the most unique breed that I've ever been involved with. Well, um, a lot I was of people raised are agreeing in, with you on the thing about your insights, you know, and some of your I was raised. Opinions. I was raised in the POA. I started ra riding POAs when I was two years old, and I rode my last POA. Uh, about two years ago before I sent him to Debbie Smith in Pennsylvania. Right. Um, 
so and I'm 62 now. So I've been I've been riding and showing POAs for 60 years, and I was part of the breeding program from the age of 12. All right. So um, I I I get upset, and I try not to get upset about things, but um, I just think that we need to keep the uniqueness and right and and that's what's always made this breed special. Yeah. It's always made it special. And people like that. your mom, you know, the, the people that really, the backbone of it, the breeders that were there in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know what I mean, when it was really forming. Well, it was being developed then, right. and, and, and that was something that, like I said, it just seems as though back then we bred smaller, and now we're breeding. And I, I have been to a few shows, and I'll be honest with you, I can look out there on that show ring and tell when there's a horse out there that I don't know yeah. if I could get it measured in. You're right. There's, there's and, some of that. And I want everybody to know I was on board of directors for both Central Florida and the Florida State Club. Um, I measured and did all of that throughout the years and stuff. So it's not as if I'm oh, just yeah. pulling things out of the air. Oh, you got the, you got the resume. Sure. You know, so, um, and I appreciate your conversation tonight, All sir. Right. Tell, tell your wife I said hello, okay. and I would steal that dog in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, she's going to be at all the POA events. That's her POA emotional support <laughs> dog. All right, Anton, it was great talking to you. Thank you for coming on here and opening You're up. You're welcome, sir. Okay. You, you, have, have a, you have a good evening, and good night to everyone. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, that was Antone Van Eyck from Florida. Uh, he's part of Wooden Chew POAs, and we learned about uh, Wooden Chew double meeting from the Dutch uh, background, wooden, wooden Shoe. Yeah, Wooden Shoe probably wouldn't sound as good spelled with shoe uh, as it did with Wooden Chew. That's cool that his dad came up with that. That's a really cool story. And then the mother, of course, uh, Kitty. We all knew Kitty if you were in POAs. Uh, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, even the 90s, of course, and 2000s. And she went in the Hall of Fame. She was also a member of the Hall of Fame committee, too. We didn't touch on that tonight, but she was. She was a big part of POAs, not just as a breeder, uh, but also a promoter, and she sh and her kids and grandkids uh, showed in POA. So I want to thank again Antone for coming on and being such a great uh, guest. If you want to come on and be a guest like Antone and you want to talk about some of your opinions or passion projects and stuff, be my guest. You can do that. People understand. I've had more comments tonight about this show probably than a lot of them. Uh, Missy Corn said this was the best show ever. I know Tracy's been talking a lot. Uh, Dean said thank you to Antone and me both and a lot of people. I'm just, I'm not touching everybody, but a lot of people made comments and very positive comments on this show. So I'm glad. Uh, I wanted to tie in the Congress tonight with, uh, with Antone as a special guest. So next week we're going to do, cover up my face here, we're going to do Who Wants to Be a POA? -er? And of course we're going to do the, we're going to do the game show. So we have three guests lined up so it's going to be a long show hopefully it's not as long as like the stallions uh, uh roster show was but i don't think it will be so we have megan sorison sorenson volunteered and then terry thorson from iowa and then jeremy stevens uh, from kansas and i kind of tailor made the questions towards them uh kind of towards their uh backgrounds and POAs and their knowledge so that you'll kind of see it'll kind of be cool like uh, Megan knows more about uh, some Utah stuff and the western stuff especially the Gardner family so some of the questions will be geared towards that and then Terry grew up around the Victor family in Iowa of course he's a successful breeder now and he's friends with like Bob Roseland and Wees Camp and those type of POAs so he follows that uh, bloodline so the questions will be that way for him and then of course Jeremy uh, I don't want to give it all away but we know his background too with some of the salty ponies and stuff of course Julie grew up in POAs uh, Jeremy's wife and uh, they raised their kids in POAs and been breeders ever since they were pretty young themselves Jeremy and Julie so that's going to be a good show next week I think too uh, the who wants to be a POA -er, that's going to be the fourth show of that, fourth time we did that, and that'll be episode 73 of Who Wants to Be, or of uh, 
my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. So I'm so thankful that you guys keep tuning in each and every week. Again, we used to have, you know, 500 and up, up to 1,500 or so views when it was public. Now that it's went private, usually we get at least 300 and some views. Last episode last week hasn't quite made 300. So if you want to go back and watch that, that was Who Wants to Be a POA uh, with Lexi from Arizona. So I need a couple more views on that. But most of them get, you know, close to 500 still. So views so we've had an episode every tuesday of this year so i'm proud of that we had five in january and now we've had one here in february and i have two more scheduled and then i got to come up with some more so the who wants to be a poa fourth show will be next week and then we're going to indianapolis meet some see some of our friends hopefully meet some new people monica and stella is going to be with me on that drive from oklahoma to indianapolis get to see the office again that's always cool and uh, have a board meeting and the general membership meeting the stallion uh, deal stallion auction then of course one of the main reasons we're there for the banquet and the award ceremony. So we will be having a recap the following Tuesday of that. So episode 74, two weeks from now, will be uh, the convention recap. All right, everybody, I want to thank Monica for being here, Stella for running around and not going potty on the floor in Studio J. That was nice of her uh, not to do that, Stella. Good puppy. Uh, They went home already, of course. And then, of course, our very special guest, POA alum, uh, you, you heard him say 60 years in POAs and horses, Anton uh, Van Eyck. Uh, thank you for coming on tonight and sharing all those cool stories. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, enjoy the song. <laughs>